This week in IT, Microsoft is set to supercharge teams with powerful new search commands. Edge is now an AI browser with co-pilot mode and support for legacy Exchange server migrations of public folders to Exchange Online is ending this October. So stay tuned for all the latest. Welcome to This Week in IT, the show where I talk about everything connected to Microsoft 365, Windows and Azure. According to the Microsoft Teams roadmap, the application will be getting new search facilities in August this year. Now, at the moment, if you want to search, you have to press Control F and you can search a chat or you can search using the search box at the top of the Teams application. And in that search bar at the top today, you can use it to run certain commands by doing a forward slash. And then there's a whole list of commands that you can type. Now, Teams differs a little bit from the new version of Outlook in that with Outlook in that search bar at the top, you can search using text prompts and filters. So for instance, you can type from and then colon and the name of the person you want to search emails from, and you can run searches like that. Now, Microsoft is planning to bring this filtering system into Teams and to expand on it. So if you like, it's kind of a a SQL style search system of the database that's behind Teams. So you'll be able to search for things like from username, name, something with a particular username, so for instance, uh, something that includes a conversation with another person. You'll be able to use in and colon to search in a particular channel or chat, and you'll be able to combine all of these filters together to perform complex searches. So they're making the search bar in Teams a little bit more like it is in Outlook today. This is going to be really useful for people who don't want to use the GUI for searching, who find it faster to keep their hands on the keyboard, of course, and to just type what what it is they want to search for. Microsoft is also going to be improving meetings by adding a new meeting tab where everything connected to your meetings will be organized. You'll also be able to use these new filters to search meetings as well. So one example of a complex search query is that you could use the in filter. So in semicolon and then say the sales channel. Then you could type from semicolon and Russell. So something that was posted by Russell and then a piece of text that you're searching for. So maybe quarter free sales. So it would look in the sales channel. It would look from any messages from me with that particular piece of text. So that's a, a quite a complex search that you'll be able to run using these filters from the search bar. This is going to be especially useful for those that don't have a co-pilot license in Microsoft 365. Quite often now, my default way of searching for anything in the Microsoft 365 tenant is just to go to co-pilot and to use natural language to get it to look on my behalf for what it is that I want. And you know, nine times out of 10, it's pretty good at actually surfacing the file that I was looking at. The problem with these filters is that you need to know something very specific about them. So you need to know maybe where you're looking for this particular item, you know, which channel or chat. Not necessarily, maybe. We'll have to see how they implement this. But with the natural language, it will throw up anything everywhere and give you a list of options. Well, probably it's one of these things that you were looking for. And I can just go and select that. So using natural language is maybe a better way than using these filters. But for people who don't have Copilot, if you're looking to hone down your searches and make them more accurate, then these filters will probably be welcome. When is this coming? Well, according to the roadmap, this should be available by the end of August this year. Of course, these things can slip. So while that's what's being said right now, it might be it gets delayed a little bit. We'll have to see. But I think it'll be coming very soon. Before I go on to the next story, I've got a quick favour to ask you. About 40% of the people who watched last week's video weren't subscribed to the channel. Now, as we go live today, we're on about 13,050 subscribers. I'd love it if we could push that up to 13,150 this week. So if you'd like to see these weekly news roundups from Petri.com, then please subscribe to the channel and 
And don't forget to hit the bell notification to make sure that you don't miss out on the latest uploads. This week, Microsoft announced that Copilot mode in its Edge browser is now available as an experimental feature. So it's something that's not enabled by default, but you can go into settings and enable it. Now, what is this exactly? Well, we've all heard of AI browsers from the likes of Perplexity. Google now has its AI mode, which it's putting into various applications. And essentially what this does is it makes your home screen a co-pilot prompt. But there are a few nuances to what this actually does and how this works differently from the way Copilot has been previously implemented in Edge. So instead of clicking for a sidebar to access Copilot, which you previously had to do in the top right hand corner of the browser, when you enable Copilot mode, you now get a uh, edge icon in the address bar on the left hand side and this brings down a little kind of uh, pop out window if you like and the great thing about this is it's much more responsive than opening the copilot sidebar which was always a bit clunky and took some time to load this new implementation it really feels like it's been properly integrated as part of the browser so even that as far as i'm concerned is a win if you want to try out copilot mode now, Microsoft is saying that Copilot mode can help users to browse, analyze pages, manage tasks, and navigate websites using natural language. And some of the features that they've been touting aren't available yet, but will be coming soon. Microsoft is saying, as I've just pointed out, that Copilot is now more seamlessly integrated into Edge. Not only do you get faster and better access to Copilot, but it's also able to see all of the open tabs in your browser window so that it can help you maybe run comparisons or analyze data regardless of where it sits. Microsoft says it's going to be adding a feature soon that will allow you to do things like book reservations, manage errands, and even find websites based on vague descriptions. And while we don't have that advanced functionality at the moment, I've been using Copilot mode in Edge for the last few days. And I would say that by and large, it's quite good because I'm more often likely to be working in a browser window. It's faster and easier, maybe just more automatic for me to open a browser window to do some research than it is to go into the Copilot application. And it's interesting that Copilot mode shares the same login as the Copilot application if you're a consumer. So any searches and chats that you perform with Copilot mode in Edge, you will see those pop up in the Copilot app in your search history as well. And I assume vice versa, although I haven't actually checked that. And the fact that it's more seamlessly integrated into Edge and just allows me to do stuff with Copilot in another place, it's just there. That's probably a good thing. When you start typing with Copilot mode enabled, rather than defaulting to the address bar, it defaults to the input box on the Copilot mode window. And it kind of understands, are you typing in a web address? So do you just go to that website? Or are you searching in a query uh, that you want Copilot to answer? And that's worked pretty well, pretty seamlessly. The big disadvantage, though, is if you're typing in something that you just want to search, the default search engine is Bing. And at least at the moment in settings, there's no way to change that. So that could be a deal breaker for me going forwards. But it's not the end of the world because if Copilot mode is useful enough, I might be prepared to put up with that. The other big disadvantage of this is that Microsoft says it's free for a limited time. We don't know what that time is gonna be yet. And after that, you're gonna to have to pay for it. So I assume that means you're going to have to be a Copilot Pro subscriber in order to get access to this going forwards. Now, I hope that I have a Copilot license for Microsoft 365. So I hope that Microsoft will introduce a way for Microsoft 365 users to have a similar experience without having to additionally sign up for Copilot Pro. 
Why is all of this stuff important? Because we're heading towards an era of AI powered browsers. And of course, Microsoft don't want to be behind in the game. This is going to work on Edge in Windows and on Mac. You don't have to have a Copilot Plus PC. This is going to be available for everyone because this is essentially most of this processing is happening in the cloud and not on your local PC. I'm not a user of any other AI powered browser, so I can't compare this with the competition, but it seems so far in the last few days, the initial implementation of this is pretty good. Let me know in the comments below what you think of AI browsers. Are you using anything that's AI powered at the moment for browsing the internet? I'd love to know what you think about it in the comments below. If you're managing on-premises Exchange server still and you're planning to migrate your public folders to Exchange Online or to Microsoft 365 Groups and you're using anything older than Exchange 2010, you need to get going with your migration project because Microsoft is setting to end the native migration capability by October this year. Microsoft says that after the deadline, October the 1st this year, any migrations to Exchange Online with these older versions of on-premises Exchange Server will simply fail. Now, Microsoft provides a PowerShell module or set of tools to do this migration in, in a batch. So it will take all of your public folders and recreate them in Exchange Online. And you can do that with these free tools from Microsoft at the moment, but after this deadline, that's all gonna stop. Now, I don't know whether there are any third-party tools that still do this after the deadline, what basis they work on, whether they use a completely different method or whether Microsoft switching off this functionality is also going to affect them. I don't know. So if you're using a migration product, you need to ask the vendor that question. Other option, of course, you will have is to upgrade to a newer version of Exchange, so Exchange Server 2016, 2019, something newer before you start the migration. Uh, or of course, you can delay your migration for a bit longer if you plan to upgrade your on-premises exchange servers. Why is Microsoft doing all of this? Because they want to phase out support for these older versions of Exchange, tighten up security, make the support landscape easier. And of course, it's about time really that you got off Exchange Server 2010 or before that, if you're still running those versions of Exchange. If you found this video useful, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up because it helps to get it seen by more people on YouTube and to grow the channel. I'm going to leave you with another video on the screen now where I talk about the new Copilot Vision feature and where it's sending your data. So do check that out. But that's it from me for this week and I'll see you next time.